name is Alon Navidan. I'm a, at the University of California, Los Angeles, in LA, California. I'm a neurologist and I subspecialize in uh, sleep medicine. When I was a neurologist, I um, was intrigued by the effects of uh, sleep deprivation on the uh, residents' fatigue. And I remember when I was a uh, post call and how the impact of sleep deprivation had on uh, my ability to uh, function the next day and also ability to remember and care for my patients with uh, functioning on two or three hours of sleep. And it was a unique area in our uh, residency program where you could take it in, uh, an elective in sleep medicine. And I took the elective and I saw that you can really make a huge impact in treating patients with sleep disorders and see them back in clinic and there is a 180 degree difference in how they do coming from being impacted by sleep deprivation, being fatigued, depressed, and treat them with CPAP, for instance, if they have sleep apnea, and making a huge difference in not only how well they function, but their quality of life. And for me as a neurologist, we don't see that in every discipline in neurology. And in sleep medicine, that's where you can really make a huge impact, and that was one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why I chose sleep medicine. Sure, so the Review of Sleep Medicine is the third edition of what is one of the most uh, commonly used textbooks for uh, helping prepare uh, physicians in the sleep field to pass their sleep examination. The book now is over 600 pages um, with ample of questions spanning the areas of insomnia, parasomnia, sleep disordered breathing. It's uh, the, the chapters and the questions are written by authorities in the sleep field uh, with distinguished record in a, not only being scientists but also outstanding clinicians. Um, it is case based, there are vignettes, there are uh, polysomnographic examples, artifacts, seizures. Um, issues relating to sleep disordered breathing, psychiatric related issues, and neurologic uh, areas relating to treatment of sleep disorders in Parkinson's. So it spans the intersection of uh, pulmonary, neurology, psychiatry, um, and is uh, I think a, an excellent tool for preparing and making sure that everyone passes the sleep Sure, so we've looked at the blueprint of um, the American Boards of uh, Sleep Medicine and have uh, simulated the percentage of topics presented, uh, reflected on the blueprints, and translating that to a similar uh, concentration and focus on our questions. So if there are 5% of the examination focusing on parasomnias, we ask 5% uh, of the questions on our review book, focusing on REM and non-REM parasomnias. Uh, not only that, but it's really going through some orphan topics like statistics, uh, ethical care of a, um, a patient with sleep problems, a medical legal issues. So it's not only it's, uh, educating physicians about the um, bread and butter uh, sleep medicine topics but also providing some uh, unique uh, experiences and teaching in statistics in uh, other areas that they may not have the knowledge or be aware of. So one of the most intriguing topics in sleep medicine for me, I think, is uh, the complex nocturnal behaviors, parasomnias specifically REM parasomnias that we see in patients with uh, uh, neurodegenerative disorders. One particular parasomnia that I think is of interest to me is REM sleep behavior disorder. This is a parasomnia that occurs out of REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. Patients end up acting their dreams and having this parasomnia in a patient can be predictive that they may 
uh, come up with a, or, or be diagnosed with Parkinson's disease uh, a few years down the road. About a th perhaps a quarter of patients with a RBD go on to develop a neurodegenerative disorder. Making a diagnosis in a patient uh, can be uh, have therapeutic implications in the future in that if you're able to diagnose um, a person who is likely or be at risk for developing Parkinson's disease, then you could potentially intervene with medications, neuroprotective agents that can prevent or delay the onset of the neurodegenerative disorder. I think that's one of the windows, one of the unique aspects of having a sleep problem and be able to predict based on the diagnosis of the sleep problem, being able to predict a neurodegenerative disease and be able to treat it in time to prevent the onset of, of the neurodegenerative problem. Well, the staff have been uh, most professional, very helpful. Um, they've always been able to assist me in communicating with authors. Um, extremely well uh, edited books that uh, when I look at the scientific information, there is also someone from Elsevier who is looking at the grammar, at the spelling, and uh, making sure that the chapters not only have a good scientific uh, uh, content, but the material is presented at the level where um, mistakes are avoided and uh, the organization is, is uh, just amazing.